um, the Warhammer and Warhammer 40k tabletop games are basically tactical, strategic, um, army-based games that use, um, for want of a better word, toy soldiers, be them plastic, be them metal, whatever, um, and you, you fight against each other. Basically, you would have an army, I would have an army. We set them up on the battlefield. Each one's based in its own world. The Warhammer Fantasy um, is exactly what it says in the tin. It's a fantasy-based game. You've got your dragons and wizards and that sort of thing. Uh, whereas Warhammer 40,000 is more of a sci-fi version of the same game. Um, so you would have alien races, flying vehicles, you know, technologies, you know, it, all the, all the sci-fi elements that make a, a really cool movie, but all based into a into a tabletop war game as well. The difference between a, a board game and a tabletop war game, um, with a board game you are limited to the board obviously, the board is never going to change. Okay, So if you're playing Risk, um, yeah, we know where the continents are, we know where everything is, if we play 30 times in a row the board will be the same. If you play a tabletop war game there'll be forests, there'll be marshes, there'll be rivers, bridges, buildings, that sort of thing, and you can put that wherever you want, and each piece has a specific role within the battlefield itself that you can either use or ignore um, to your advantage or not, or maybe your opponent will take advantage of it, but everything has a specific um, sort of feature and, and rule mechanic within the game to use. Okay, so the gaming process uh, in Warhammer, Warhammer 40,000, I will have an army, my opponent has an army, we line them up um, on the back of the battlefield, which is normally like a six foot by four foot table. Um, and very similar to chess, that's the board where we're going to play on, everything's going to move, everything's going to attack in a certain way. Um, it's very simple, it, it always looks a lot more complicated than it actually is, but it is very simple. So the process of um, making and painting a model, uh, by far my favourite part to be honest. Terrible at the game, really enjoy the creative sort of side of, side of the hobby. Um, in terms of making, you buy your, your toy soldiers, whatever they may be, whatever takes your fancy, what you're into. Okay. Um, everything normally comes on a, a bendy sprue like that. Um, use your clippers to cut these bad boys out. Okay. Um, glue them all up, and uh, you end up with, but uh, you end up with your model. I uh, specifically go in for a bit of conversion work myself. I always like to add things and do custom sort of jobs on, on models. Um, I like adding lots of different bits and pieces. But you can just buy the kit, glue it all up and then it's finished, okay? Once you've got to that sort of stage, you're ready to paint the model, which again is, is great fun. You can get your hands real dirty on this and uh, just go wild. Um, using all your paints, whatever you've got, you can paint anything, any color you want. If you really want an army of pink space marines running across the table, then that's your thing. If that's what you want, then you can do that. Everything's all water-based, they're really easy to use. Kids use them in primary schools, you know, so uh, they're perfectly safe to use. Personally, I would spend maybe 20 hours just converting a model so it's perfect for how I want it to look on the battlefield. It might be rubbish and not very well painted when it got there, but for me, it's the actual modelling side of it that I get the most enjoyment out of. But likewise, and conversely, you also get uh, people who glue the model really quickly. They won't paint it, they'll go straight to the table and they do all their um, gaming and that's where they spend all their time. Uh, okay, so the different types of people who come into the shop is many and varied. Um, everything from five-year-old boys running around who have never seen anything like this before to uh, lawyers and estate agents who come in suited and booted. You know, they come in for their weekly fix. They buy their toys, they buy their cards, they grab everything, and they're straight out. It's literally every every type of person. I think I've seen every person from every background um, come into the shop and. and and get involved in it in some way. Um, I think the reason um, it appeals to such a wide variety of different people is the fact that it's quite a social hobby, it's creative, it's interactive, um, it's intelligent, you know, it really does you know, expand your mind playing the game. Um, and most of all, it's bloody good fun, you know, we, we really enjoy it. Uh, I got involved when I was about 11 or so and that was because my next door neighbour, he had some models and stuff and I initially got involved just for the painting side of things because my mother does cake decoration as a career and she is always like fiddling with little models and making things with fine crafts and materials and that kind of thing so obviously the male side of that was kind of like Warhammer in a way and I used to buy these models just to paint with them 
and I got very, very good early on at painting models, and I used to enter competitions and stuff, and I never used to do any of this gaming at all. It was only when I got older that, like, I have all these models sitting there, I might as well do something with them, and so then I came to learn how to game and all of that. I mean, I'm hoping to get the kids involved when they get older. You know, it's quite a good activity, you know, it's like creative, um, a lot of reading when it comes to rule books, um, a lot of mental thinking, strategy, um, probability with dice rolls and all that, so it's quite a good hobby for kids, but I still see that it is definitely an adult's game when it comes to a lot of aspects of the game. I think the, the different things you can gain from uh, a tabletop war game hobby is um, um, confidence for a start. You know, we have many people who come in that don't know how to play, they don't know anyone, it might be their first night, whatever, and their confidence is low. Um, you get two people who do the same hobby. It doesn't matter the age difference, it doesn't matter what else they're into, you've got two people who are into the same thing. They'll start talking and they, you know, you're building up confidence all the time. Um, we've got young kids who their English and their maths is not great, they need to read a rule book, they need to look at some charts, they need to compare some numbers, and that improves those skills as well. So literacy skills, numeracy skills are always being improved um, for the young guys. Um, and the age ranges differ greatly as well. You know, like I said, you have the five-year-old kid right up to uh, the 12-year-olds who've been given their money for school and whatnot, and they've not bought lunch and they've come in and bought cards instead, you know, um, up to your lawyer types who come in and spend lots and lots and lots of money and uh, buy armies that I'll never be able to have, you know. Um, it really is every walk of life, every kind of person, every different age you can think of. You know? We don't exclude anybody from our hobby.